Hi everyone, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy, and today I want to talk about the applications for this thing I keep calling functional breathing. So I'm always hammering on this topic of functional breathing, right? But what are the actual applications for these principles in our daily lives? So I could rattle off a ton of ways that learning to breathe more functionally has the potential to improve our lives in countless and sometimes unexpected ways. But I thought it might be more useful to share with you some client and some student case studies. Would you like that? I think it's helpful to hear what my real life students and clients experience as they go through this practice and progression of learning to breathe more functionally. So I want to share three simple case studies with you today just to show you what is possible for you on your breathing journey. Okay, so first up we have Ben. Ben is a runner and he came to me looking for suggestions to help him improve his bolt score. And so the bolt score is something that we use to get a rough measurement, a rough sense of your CO2 tolerance. I've actually made a video about this on the channel a long time ago. I'll be sure to link to it in the video description. And so in addition to this kind of more superficial goal of wanting to improve his bolt score, Ben also said that he felt like his breathing was completely out of control during his runs and that that was really negatively impacting his performance. And he felt like it was, um, he was automatically and maybe unnecessarily defaulting to mouth breathing really quickly early in his runs. And then also part of his struggle is that he structurally has very narrow airways that he feels limits his capacity to breathe. So when Ben came to me looking for advice, he had already been playing around with a fair number of breathing exercises, but he wasn't really seeing the results he wanted. And I think that was partially because he was maybe dividing his attention across too many things, too many strategies, and they weren't necessarily hitting his specific needs, right? So we really dialed in some of those strategies. So for him, mouth taping at night was super important just to make sure that he was getting the appropriate amount of recovery time after his runs, um, also to ensure nasal breathing all night, right? So that he wasn't um, traumatizing those upper airways during the night. And also in taping his mouth, we were hoping to get him to start to regain greater nasal function, right? Maybe hoping to even dilate those airways a little bit. For him, we found that the breathe light exercise was so critical to his progression. So he really doubled down on that to the point where he was practicing breathe light with air hunger for maybe 30 to 60 minutes a day. So now I don't teach the breathe light exercise on my channel and that's because I feel like it is a little bit more nuanced and requires a little bit more attention to detail and sometimes a little bit more hand holding. But if you are familiar with the exercise and you are looking for tips, I have created a breathe light digital product for my students, which you can find on my website. So that breathe light product is super affordable. It accommodates different learning styles. It includes a very brief PDF booklet with all the written descriptions. It includes four audio recordings. So you still have me there to help guide your practice. And then I also just added five instructional videos, which really help you to find and sustain that mild air hunger, which is such a critical component of that exercise. So if you're interested, I'll also be sure to link to that product in the video description. So back to Ben. So besides just mouth taping at night and then discovering that he really found it useful to focus in on that breathe light exercise in his downtime, in his non-training time, for him, it was really important also to shift his mental game, his mindset a little bit. So he had to really go through that sort of ugly and frustrating phase that every runner has to go through. And this would actually apply to any athlete doing any sport of slowing down his running pace to really match his breathing capacity. In other words, really allowing his breath to lead his runs as opposed to letting his legs lead his runs. And then with Ben, we also definitely spoke about this concept of breathing gears, right? So really how to appropriately shift your breathing with subtle increases in intensity. Um, it's definitely a humbling experience to acknowledge that 
to make improvements, sometimes we have to take two steps back, right? So it's, it's a struggle, right? It's definitely a mindset shift. Um, and it can be a very humbling experience. You really have to let go of the ego and you have to let go of the competition and know that with continued practice, you're gonna get those gains that you're looking for. So for all of you out there who are really considering trying to convert more to nasal breathing during whatever your sport is, just know that this reestablishing this connection between your breath and your movement it can really feel like a regression at first and it can kind of feel like a bummer. So you have to go into it knowing that there might be a few steps back, but the silver lining is that with continued practice, um, it, you really start to breathe more efficiently with time and it really ups your game. Now I should also mention here that Ben is a really disciplined person and he was really willing to take it on and do the work consistently. So his efforts really got him the results that he was seeking. After about three months of tweaking and practicing these different exercises, he noticed that his CO2 tolerance was really improving and that he was much more comfortable with that sensation of air hunger during his, during his exertion, during his runs. And most importantly, that his breathing during his runs was becoming so much more efficient. So that means that he could manage that same workload he had been doing all along, but with less breathing, with less fatigue, and with less effort. So three months into this process, after one of his races, he told me that he had smashed his personal best and recorded his best time in over 10 years. <laughs> while still maintaining good control of his breathing. So that was really key for him, right? He said that he was able to maintain nasal breathing for almost his entire race, except for maybe a few tough hills on the course. And he said that he noticed every other runner he passed was breathing way faster, heavier, and louder than he was. So that's very cool. Next up, we have Mark. Mark came to me complaining about fatigue, chronic pain, lack of concentration, lack of motivation, and experiencing a sort of subdued anxiety because he felt he wasn't living up to his potential. How many of us can relate to that? So Mark actually went through my whole boot camp experience, and after implementing those exercises week after week with consistency, he noticed that his perceived stress associated with air hunger drastically decreased. And so that translates to less anxiety, less perceived stress, clearer thinking, more resilience in life. And his understanding of how his breath is connected into his body and specifically how his diaphragm connects into all the other systems of his body really deepened for him. Now that was super critical for him, super important for him because we found that he had a pretty substantial dysfunctional breathing pattern where his ribs were barely moving at all on his inhale. So Mark has suffered for a long time with chronic low back pain, disc herniations, and over time, he's developed this bracing pattern, this holding pattern, this very protective pattern that has led to a dysfunctional breathing pattern, right? So he hadn't been able to really take a deep, full, comfortable, expansive breath in probably years. So with Mark, we did a lot of work on diaphragm awareness, uh, learning to mobilize and expand the ribs, learning to really properly deepen the breath in order to break up that bracing pattern that was keeping him stuck in chronic pain. And so by the end of the boot camp, Mark said that he was feeling great. Uh, his fatigue was way down. His chronic pain was finally subsiding and his sleep was greatly improving. He said that he just in general feels more alert and present during his day. When he does get stressed, he says he's able to catch it now and sort of stop that negative feedback loop so that he doesn't get overreactive. He says he feels much more in control of his emotions and his behaviors and feels more resilient towards his everyday stressors. He says he can much more easily consciously get into that parasympathetic state when he needs it. So again, those are some very cool results and it's very empowering to know that we can accomplish all that just by shifting our breathing pattern a little bit. 
And then last up for today, we have Ashley. Ashley also went through my full bootcamp experience and she came into the bootcamp with a sort of laundry list of issues. In her own words, she said she just felt like a total mess. It's important to note here that Ashley has incredible body awareness. So this is someone who's a professional dancer, she's a choreographer, she's an advanced Pilates instructor, and she's actually a professional singer too. So she has a ton of body awareness and you would think she would have a ton of breath awareness as well, but she told me that she feels she's never breathed properly in her entire life or in her entire career. So this is a big deal because we always assume that just because someone's very athletic or achieving at a high level that their breathing must be perfect, but it's actually not always the case. There's plenty of examples of really high achieving athletic performers who have some amount of dysfunctional breathing pattern. Okay, so what were Ashley's symptoms? What was on this laundry list exactly? Well, first up, she has structurally very small, narrow airways. And with that, she has a history of a, a deviated septum, lots of allergies, and tons of sinus issues since she was a kid. She came into the boot camp dealing with an active Epstein Barr virus with chronic fatigue symptoms, with tons of chronic pain and inflammation, joint degeneration throughout her entire spine and pelvis. She has past rib cage issues from her dance career. Um, she was recovering from a very recent hip surgery and she also has a lot of hormone imbalances which are just naturally coming up now at the transition that she's at in her life. So there was a lot going on. And because there was so much going on, her real goal was you know, she has a great understanding that breathing is important, right? She has enough of a background with human anatomy and physiology that she gets it, breathing is important, but she really wanted to see if by improving her breathing mechanics and by really understanding the principles of functional breathing, if that would help to improve her myriad symptoms. So by her own admission, one week into the boot camp, she admitted to me that she's been breathing wrong her whole life. She had it completely backwards and she really had that awareness of, wow, I've absolutely been doing this wrong for decades. <laughs> so she, she really had it backwards and she had a ton of epiphanies throughout this process of cultivating greater breathing awareness for her daily life and her daily activities. Now, before I share with you the results that she got, it's also important to note again that Ashley is exceptionally disciplined, right? So when you give her an exercise, she's fully committed to practicing it with absolute consistency. And she really did. She really put in a lot of work of implementing all of these different breathing strategies from the breath boot camp. So what were some of her results? She said by the end of the boot camp, she felt like she could finally take a truly deep breath. So remember, when someone has a dysfunctional breathing pattern for years and years and years, and they finally learn how to do something simple like mobilize their rib cage, it is profound, right? It's profound. It has a profound impact on how they feel, how they move, how they sleep what their emotional state is, it's really big. It's something so simple, but it trickles into very powerful results. So she had a, t she like Mark had a lot of holding patterns around the rib cage from these past injuries and she had been bracing so much and it was preventing her from being able to take a truly functional breath. So she really started to understand how to fully activate her diaphragm, how to mobilize her rib cage. And she said she no longer felt like she was constantly having to gasp for air throughout her entire day. So because of all her chronic pain and inflammation, you can imagine there's a lot of stress and anxiety associated with that. So she also really appreciated being able to improve her CO2 tolerance and also, uh, appreciated learning these effective tools for helping her to consciously downregulate her nervous system when she really needed it. So remember, these are self-care tools. These are self-soothing tools that we can pull out and utilize when we really need them. And this ability to understand how to downregulate her nervous system is so critical for everything that she's going through, right? It's so critical for that healing process. And now as Ashley's continued to play around with these strategies, 
long after the boot camp, she's also told me that these breathing techniques help her to recover from exercise much more quickly. So her recovery is improving, her sleep is improving, and she says she's better able to manage her energy levels throughout the whole day. Um, and she says that in general, she's just feeling much less stressed. She feels like her chronic inflammation is improving. And the big one for her is that her brain fog is finally clearing. So I think also not just oxygenating the brain better, but also creating a little bit more hormonal balance in the body is probably what is happening there. So those are all really amazing results as well. I hope that you enjoyed hearing these real life student case studies. If you did, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make more videos like this so you can really see what types of symptoms people are coming to me with and then what the evolution, what the progression is to get them sort of to the other side, to making improvements. And then if you're interested in working with me and getting results like these, please make sure you check out my new and improved four week breath bootcamp. Today is the final day to get 20% off the entire program, which includes lifetime access and a free 30 day trial to my private online Be Light community. I will be sure to include all the appropriate links in the video description, and I really hope to see you in the program. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope to see you next time.